Today we're going to be talking about Sakura Haruto. Sakura was introduced in Anime Episode 1 and Manga Chapter 3 of the Naruto Anime and Manga. Now, I would like to talk about my stance on Sakura quickly. I won't go into why, but I'd just like to say I actually may like Sasuke more than Sasuke. More than, I may like Sakura more than Sasuke. I really go back and forth on those two characters. And Saki's like my fourth favorite character. So, maybe my first, like, I don't know. My top five Naruto characters are weird. Now, Sakura's up there in like the top three. I love Sakura. Now, I'll go and get into why later, but first I want to talk about the character. Now, Sakura's original intention was to be the keystone in the rivalry between the main character, secondary main character, Uchiha Sake, and main character, Naruto Uzumaki. She was the heroine, but she was more so a plot device to make Naruto and Sasuke fight, and she would be a li original love interest of Naruto Uzumaki. Now, first of all, I feel that in part one, Sakura was really annoying. So I still like her in part one, but she was kind of annoying, she was weak, and she was pretty useless. She really was, did, couldn't do anything until Sasuke, until after Sasuke left and she had a time skip. She need, Sakura needed a time skip, alright? Then again, so did Naruto. Naruto was weak as shit. I'm, I'm sorry, that's just my jab at how weak Naruto was pre-time skip. No, but let's talk about it. So Sakura really didn't do anything. I, I want to talk about her, but she didn't, okay. she didn't do anything up until the to tuning into Anark, where she was being held down while protecting Naruto and Sasuke, and she cut her hair. Now, Sakura, now for some people that may not be a big deal, but for a character like Sakura, who focuses everything around Sasuke, and especially when we learn the reason her hair was long, or because Sasuke likes girls with long hair, you have a kind of Sakura way of saying, you know what, protecting Naruto and Sasuke, and I know she would say Sake and Naruto. I don't know why I do that. I always say Naruto and Sake, but protecting her teammates was more important to her than Sake's feeling. Which is one of my favorite moments with the character. It's just good character growth, but it's not like crazy character growth. One well, of the reasons I like Sakura, her character growth isn't like Sake, like, I'm not a mass murderer anymore character growth is like, oh, I'm over my, I'm, oh, I'm like, I'm not going to let my childhood crush run my life, like, normal 12-year-old girl growing up stuff, instead of, like, stocking batshit crazy thing that you would call her, uh, not stock or stocking. Like, Sasuke grows up, and he's like, I mean, he's like, his character development revolves around not be, going from being a mass murderer to not being a mass murderer. While Sakura is just getting over a crush. I'm not getting over it, but... In the tuning of Dan Dark, I feel she got over her unhealthy obsession to a degree. Like, she, she became more logical about it. Like, that was the point where she over... Before this, that you would have asked her to kill Naruto to save Sasuke, she would have done it. This is at the point where she was like, where she's now like, okay, no, I need to come up with a way to save both of them. This is at the point where she's logical about things, and she's like, yes, I love Sake, but Eric, but protecting him and Naruto is more important than impressing him with my good luck. And I really liked that. Now, after that, she fought Eno in shooting in there, which kind of dev dev devolved from an actual fight into an argument about Sake's failing, like a cat fight, if you will. So... That, not gonna talk much about that, but I will say, really good fight. Like, some of, I really like the close combat stuff, so Sakura fight some of my favorites. Now, Sakura big moment is, of course, her two big moments, couple big moments, or one, her iconic moment is probably, besides her Sasuke fight, which I will get to, when she tried to stop Sakura from leaving, she basically just say, she couldn't do anything, she asked in order to bring him back. Just gonna skip over that and get the skip with uh her fight with Sasori. Her fight with Sasori was awesome. Her fight with Sasori is actually probably my third favorite fight in the series. 
with Sasuke versus Itachi at number two, and Naruto versus Sasuke at number one. Part two. Part two. Part one is like number. Part one is actually one below Sakura versus Sasuke at number four. If you're curious. No, but um, the reason I love the Sakura versus Sasuke fight is that is probably the most convoluted Naruto ever got in terms of actual real life life strategy, like. Using the antidote to counter Astosteri's poison, the couple of seconds where he had. I also thought it was like, I had 10 seconds until the poison kicked in. Like, that is so good. The, the, that fight with everything I love about Naruto Part 1 fights. But with everything I love about the Part 2 fights and like the destruction and the high powered characters. And yeah, great fight. Now, after the Astosteri fight, Sagura um, and the Death Star. She cried when Naruto go for a tail and begged him to stop. Actually, in a real moment of selflessness, she actually offered to take Sasuke and she just, like, just stopped. Because she couldn't handle what Naruto had become. Because Naruto became a freaking... Naruto! Okay, let's look at it like this. The Sakura and Naruto is just really hyperactive kid. Sakura views Naruto as like a kid brother. So it's like if you're a little kid brother turned into a rampaging monster and started murdering shit. It was like, no, she couldn't comprehend the sweet little brother, her sweet little brother becoming a monster. And that was, that was like, worse than anything. So she asked him to stop. She thinks, stop, gay, stop it, just don't become this monster. That was a great moment, but that's, that's mostly my bias. I'm an Arasaka fan. But, even as I can admit, there is a brother-sister relationship. I mean, that's what it is. Now, let's move on to a core. Um, she tried to fight Sasuke, which, uh, people need to forget. Sakura tried to fight Sasuke that time. She got her ass handed to her, and some people would bash her for that, which is a problem I had with the fan base. But, they were all at one shot. It's like, Naruto was, like, manhandled by the guy. He was like, hey, how, how's it doing? Like, he entered his head, took out the QB. I mean, not actually overpowered him, but you know, he, he like distorted his chakra or something, and just so good. So yeah, I'm really a fan of Sakura trying to fight Sakura. I think she got taken out by Chidori Scream or Ch Chidori Nagashi, but I could be wrong. She may have been like punched or something. I don't remember if she was punched in the stomach, or I, but I believe it was. Not going to stab the ground and use Chidori Nagashi or Chidori Stream on her. But then after that, Sakura doesn't really do much. She has a couple of things to give filler to help out Naruto, like bring him food or get Rasen Shidikin training, but she doesn't really do much until the war. Where, uh, no, 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 no. Light of Iron. Let's talk about the Light of Iron. Oh boy. I will be doing a video about her concession in the future. But to be blunt, okay. Sakura confesses to Naruto in the Light of Iron. She confesses her love to him, which isn't real. But she does it with the intention of saving him. Now, in Sakura's eyes, Naruto's her little brother, who has a terrorist organization after him. And the man she loves just joined that terrorist organization and wants to destroy her home. Mind you, when Sakura said he wants to destroy Konoha, that would require killing Sakura's entire family. Unlike Naruto and Sasuke, Sakura has something to lose in, in, in this situation. Like Naruto and Sasuke, Naruto would survive. Naruto could survive the destruction of Konoha. He could. Sakura could. But her family wouldn't. Her family would be slaughtered by Sasuke. Now to Sakura, it was like, My family and the guy I look at, the little brother, is in danger. What can I do to protect my little brother? To do that, kind of like something Itachi would do, in a way. I, that's a really bad comparison. <laughs> That's a really bad comparison, but... She confesses her love to him because she believes that if she tells him she loves him, in Sakura's eyes, the promise between them is the only reason. It was kind of like in a mo- in, It was, wasn't her best judgment because she knows about the bond between them. She kind of thought that maybe if she let Naruto off the hook and gave him something that, wor that made it worse, Staying alive, worth being careful. Like, if they were in a relationship, Naruto would feel a sense of obligation to her to not go and do something stupid 
by fight Sasuke and did when he knew they would die. Or go running into Akatsuki territory just to fight Sasuke. He'd be like, listen, I have a girlfriend, I have the responsibility. I see your plans and use that responsibility against him to kind of like blackmail him, I guess. Into not fighting Sasuke. And that is my stance on the Sakura Confession. Tell me your thoughts on the confession in the comments. They're probably negative because let's all hate on Sakura, right? No, but um, she then engaged in combat. With Sakura attempted to kill Sake, that failed. She was saved by Kakashi and Naruto again. During the war, she released my total regeneration and strength of 100. And we learned that she, in her Byakuto form, apparently, from what I understand, is able to keep up, had enough chakra, had enough chakra to keep up with Naruto and Sake. Yeah. Did you have to understand? We have a creature you summon with summoning Jitsu. Indicates the amount of chakra you have. So that means Sakura has at least more chakra than Naruto did as a child, which was debatably more than Kakashi. I mean, Sakura, are, Sakura is incredibly strong during the war. She gets a massive power boost. She unleashed the strength of 100, which allows her to survive a stab from Madara Uchiha. Okay, thank God we're done with that. She ends up marrying Uchiha Sake, who tried to kill her like three times. I tend to start stop docking and starting a revolution and punching Kagoya in the face. Okay, we're done. Now there are two more things I want to cover here. Why I like Sakura and what I feel her role will be in the Boruto theory. Because there are really two pop there are three roles I have come up with that she can serve. One of them is actually very interesting. How, okay, but first why I like her. The thing I like about Sakura is that she's normal and all of her power-ups, I mean the power she attained during the time skip wasn't through, I mean Naruto and Sakura get a larger power-up, if I'm going to be honest, by getting upset or by conquering a tail beast. I mean, Naruto got in Biju mode by becoming friends with someone. Sakura got his mom Dekyo because he was really upset about what happened to Itachi. I mean, what? Sakura got her strength of 100 and my total regeneration by training. She trained, she stored up the chakra, she worked hard, and she got the techniques. And that's what I like about her. I also just like her personality. I think she's one of the more entertaining characters. So I find her very entertaining when she's on screen. And honestly, I just really like Sakura. Is there something wrong with that? I also think she's kind of hot. But that's, that's just my own personal preference. But the point is, is that Sakura is one of my favorite characters. And yeah. Now that I talked about what I like about her, why don't I quickly talk about her three, her three, maybe two possible worlds in the Boruto theory. Now, one world is the Ace Hokage. As we know, she's equal to Zunade, meaning she could possibly have taken over for Naruto after his death. Now, I don't think Kurumahamu is ready. I for what he did, he had like, and he didn't look ready in the Boruto movie. Like he, there was nothing. To, I didn't get like a, I got like a, a Kakashi vibe, not like a Fusher Hokage Jiraiya vibe. Like I didn't get that. So it's either really her, Kakashi retakes over, or Sasuke. And I don't see how they would feel comfortable making Sasuke the Hokage. I feel like I feel like what would happen would be Sasuke would be a protector, like Sasuke would be the powerhouse, but Sasuke would just kind of be kind of like the emperor in Japan, like would be like a Sasuke would be a figurehead. But army would do all the fighting, but Sasuke would just be a figurehead as she could stand for the same thing Naruto did, like helping out the citizens in the streets, doing stuff like that. Now the other position is of course. Like a god, a god protector of Boruto. Like her role could literally just be a protect Boruto. Like, like, like when Sasuke's not around, just be like a protector of Boruto. Because I would have, I don't know if they had him in Japan, but I would just, I can definitely think Sakura feeling like a godmother kind of role. So having that kind of role to Boruto, like giving him advice. You know, like if Sasuke not like if Sasuke happened to be dead, she could be the one that he goes to and he'd be like. My biggest, he not the bias, 
Sakura gonna tell him the truth. Like, if he wants the honest to God truth about something related to his father, or if he needs to know something that Hinata doesn't, Sakura probably knows. Because he, 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 he not gonna go, he not to probably isn't gonna tell Boruto straight up, your father was a complete and utter loser. Sakura would straight up be like, listen, your father was a loser, he was annoying, and nobody liked him. I, he not that wouldn't probably call Naruto annoying if mean, she didn't find him annoying, but let's be honest, he was annoying. And if he needs unbiased, clear facts, I can definitely see Sakura giving it to him and feeling like a godmother kind of role. Because she's, her and Naruto are practically family, so that's probably the role she's been playing in his life up until this point. Now, another role I thought of was if Naruto and Sasuke are dead. Sakura may be looking for the next reincarnation of Asura and Indra, and her goal may be to make them be friends. Like, that may be her goal. Like, find the next reincarnation of Indra and Asura, and make sure they turn out being friends. You know, like, because there are traits in them. Like, you can, normally, you can probably tell by the time they were 12 who they were. By the time they were, like, beating each other up on the playground. Like, you can probably figure out who they are. So find the reincarnation and use them. And you know, or maybe protect them. Like maybe they already found them and Sakura making it her job to like protect them. Because now that it this became, I would assume this is like knowledge that it is now, but history of Hagoromo, Indra, and Asura. Assuming it is public knowledge, characters like Bakagi may want to use these children as like weapons. And Sakura and Kakashi girls could be like, no, they are children, we're not using them as weapons. But yeah, I mean, that's really all I have to say. I mean, I could go on for hours about how awesome Sakura is, but I'm not going to. I also do think she's Kage level. I'm going to say that now. But it's like, that's, I thought she was Kage level before the Boruto movie. After the Boruto movie, the fact that she can do things do not, they couldn't. Yes, yeah, she's Kage level. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video where I talked about Sakura Haruno. Tell me your thoughts on Sakura in the comment section down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. And subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation. Signing out. Next week will be another Straw Hat, by the way. So yeah, and the following week will be Uchiha Sasuke. But you know what, actually? I don't know if these are going to be weekly. But these are like 20 minutes and they take a lot of to make a thumbnail for them and... I don't know if these will be weekly because I need to have the energy. I'm really tired a lot. And I would need to have the energy to sit down and talk about the character for 20 minutes. Which is tiring. And plus all the other videos that I have to make. These are incredibly time consuming. Because I spent like 18 minutes on this. So yeah, like the video if you enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts on Sakura in the comments section down below. And subscribe for more character discussion videos like this. Have a great day, guys.